So the very first tools that, that I'm going to show you are the add a quarter rulers. The add a quarter ruler is probably the most important tool that you're going to use for the foundation paper piecing process that we use. The add a quarter ruler was designed by Carolyn McCormick. You have your little six inch add a quarter ruler. This ruler is used at, when you're working with small uh, foundation paper pieces, pieces anywhere from the size of three inch up to a six inch unit. Okay, then we go to our 12 inch. The 12 inch uh, ruler is probably the most common used ruler among all uh, women who do foundation paper piecing. I use the 12 inch probably more than anything else. But my favorite ruler is the 18 inch. And the reason I like the 18 inch ruler is because it's long enough that we can do long foundation papers. Most of my designs are anywhere from 12 inches up to 27 inches long. And so working with a little tiny ruler and sliding it, you have the issues of cutting your fingers, you'll have issues of uh, messing up your papers, and so working with a very long ruler takes all of that fuss out. I'm going to show you very quickly the next step of working with a ruler. The next tool that you need for foundation paper piecing is what I call a fold template. We have a seven inch fold template that we use with the six inch add a quarter ruler. We have cut a 12 inch fold template that we use with the 12 inch add a quarter ruler. And we have an 18 inch fold template that we use with the 18 inch add a quarter ruler. Now you can't buy a fold template on the market. So what you have to do is cut one. I'm gonna tell you what type of template plastic to use. This is a sheet of template plastic, and we get, you can buy this through most any of one of your quilt shops. The stock number on it is called IPP50 weight, all right? And it is for quilters, that's all it really says. And this is what I cut all my templates out of. The third tool that we use all the time in my classes are glue sticks. The glue sticks are used for different reasons. The most common glue stick that I um, recommend is called Yoohoo. You can buy the Yoohoo glue stick in just about any office supply store. I buy the smaller one because it's easier to work with. If I leave the lid off and it dries out, it's not going to break me financially to throw it in the garbage and start over with a new glue stick. We use this, the Yoohoo glue stick to, do the, to glue the very first um, piece of fabric under our foundation papers. The second glue stick that I use is a stick glue stick. It's very thin. One of the companies that I work with that I um, use the most is the Fonz and Porter. Um, it's a blue one. It disappears when you're working with it. And I use this, the small glue stick like this when I do all my curved piecing. And you will be able to see all of these tools in use. The other thing I like about the Fonz and Porter glue stick is that actually you can buy what we call refill. And so you just buy these little um, refill sticks and you put it in and fill it back up. Now we have our rotary cutter. You will need to have use both sizes rotary cutter I use the 60 millimeter rotary cutter more than any other rotary cutter. And the reason why is because as much cutting as I do, it's a lot easier on my wrist and my shoulders. It has a bigger blade on it, so it'll cut twice the distance as the smaller one without getting dull. You need a package of refill blades. Every time I start a new project, a new quilt, I put in a new blade. That way my blade is brand new when I start all my cutting. The new blade is probably the most important thing to realize is when you're working with a dull blade, it hurts your shoulders, it hurts your hands. And the newer the blade, the easier it's gonna go through your fabric. 
I very seldom cut through less than 12 layers of fabric when I do my cutting. So I can cut out my fabrics very quickly. And by working with the big rotary cutter, it gives me the, the width that I need between here and here in order to cut through a large stack of fabrics. Sometimes I'll actually cut through as many as 30 fabrics with the big rotary cutter. I use the littler rotary cutter when I'm working with the, the smaller add a quarter ruler. With the 12 inch and the 18 inch add a quarter ruler, I always work with the bigger rotary cutter. The other tool I would like to show you is a case for the big rotary cutter. I think this case is one of the nicest things that Clover has ever come out with. When you're going to classes, all you have to do is put your rotary cutter inside here and throw it in your suitcase and you don't have to worry about getting your fingers cut when you reach into your tool container. Another great tool that I like working with is called the flower pins. There are several companies that make flower pins. I get people ask me all the time, why do I need a flower pin? I guess the biggest reason is because I like working with them. The flower pins are long. They have a flat edge on them. So when I actually put this into the foundation paper, my, the flat part of the, the head actually lays flat with the foundation paper. I do use glue instead of flower pins when, I work, um, when I'm putting the fabric onto the first piece of paper, but some women don't like to use glue. And so I find it what I have them do use instead is the flower pin because you can fold the foundation paper back over the top of it and your paper lays flat so you can lay the out a quarter ruler onto it. Yes, you can do paper piecing without a flower pin, but there again, just go buy them. The next thing I would like to tell you is about binder clips. Binder clips are fantastic. You can use them to hold your fabrics together. We use the binder clips to clip the foundation papers together after we cut them. We use the binder clips to clip the paper, the template pieces onto our fabric pieces once they've been cut apart. We can use the binder clips to hold all the units together. Um, we use the binder clips to hold the template layout sheets onto the fabric. And so when my students write me and say, do I really need binder clips? I say, yes. They say, how many do I need? I say, as many as you can afford to buy. You can't have too many binder clips because what you're going to find out is when you cut up one of my quilts and you have 125 pieces, every single piece is going to have a binder clip. All your stacks are going to have binder clips on it. So there's no such thing as having too many binder clips. You need all the different sizes that you can get. We have very little ones here. We have medium sized ones. And I don't have any great big ones because they're already stashed into my fabric stash with all my fabrics. This is a purple thing. People say, what's a purple thing? When I first started work, when I first saw the purple thing, I laughed. I said, who in the world's going to pay three bucks for a purple thing? I probably sell more purple things than anybody else in the U.S. The lady that designed the purple thing is from a company called Littlefoot LT. Okay, her name is Lynn Graves. I have never met her, but I love her little tool. It has a flat end right here. That flat end I use as a quarter inch measurement when I'm working on my, at my machine. It also has a rough end here, and when I'm doing my curved piecing, I use this just like a stiletto, and it grabs the fabric and the paper, where most of the time a real stiletto will poke through your paper. So I love this end of the purple thing. The other thing I do with a purple thing here is I use this end as an applique tool for doing applique turnover. So it's a $3 item and I absolutely love the purple thing and recommend all my students buy one. Right now what I'm going to show you are some different types of uh, chain rippers and seam rippers. With all sewing you know that you have to have a seam ripper in your tool bag. Um, any type of seam ripper that you can come up with is, works really good. I always use the clover because they're nice and sharp and I'm used to looking for brown and so that's why I buy clovers because they're brown. The other little tool here is called, this is called a chain ripper. What a chain ripper is, is they've actually built this so that it sets in this little pedestal here. And when we do our chain piecing with the foundation papers, 
then you have to go through and slice, bet cut the threads between each paper, you know. So after you get all your chain done, then you just start picking them up and you take the threads and you cut them on here. And that's the way a chain ripper is done. And the company that makes a chain ripper is it's called M&S Screw Products Incorporation, and they're out of Upland, California. Okay, the next thing on my list is uh, sewing needles. I use a size 70 Microtech sharp needle for all my foundation paper piecing. And the reason I like to use the Microtech, um, the size 70, is because when I'm actually sewing, the, the sharp point on the needle is a lot quieter going through the foundation paper. The other thing I like about the sharp is it doesn't leave as much residue in the feed dogs after sewing and chaining 50 different foundation papers because you do get a lot of dust and stuff in your machines. You have to keep your machines clean. And the other thing I like about the Microtech is with the newsprint, it's pr pretty much the perfect size hole for sewing through newsprint. When you're actually working with foundation papers, you have to use different size needles for the different size weights of paper that you're working with. And since we work with newsprints all the time, I find that the Microtech is actually the nicest size to work with. Okay, now we're going to talk about our threads. It's very important that when you're working with a thread for foundation paper piecing that you have a high quality cotton thread. The, my favorite weight is to work with the size 50 weight and I work with a 100% cotton. Um, with Mettler it's the one that's silk finished. And the other thread I really like working with is the Masterpiece by Superior Threads. It's also 50 weight. Those are my two favorite threads to work with. I also like to work with an Orofil thread, which I don't have a spool of Orofil here with me. But Orofil actually has a very nice 50 weight thread that we work with with the foundation, with the newsprint also. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna show you are my rulers. I work with a lot of Fisker rulers. I like the orange and black lines. It's easy for me to see them when I'm working with the darker fabrics as well as the, long, the lighter fabrics. This particular ruler is a 3 inch by 18 inch ruler. This ruler is a 6 inch by 12 inch ruler. And this ruler right here is their 6 inch by 24 inch ruler. I also have one of their brand new mats. And this mat is actually a 36 inch by 24 inch mat. And the other mat I really like to work with is the um, Ulfa mats. Both of them are very good mats to work with. Okay, the next thing I like to have my students bring is bags. And they always ask me why and what size and how many. And it, my answer is a box of bags. I use the Ziploc bags. Um, I use them in the gallon size. I use them in the sandwich bags. And I also use the quart size bags. It just depends on how big my units are, how many units I have, as far as um, how many bags I need. So every quilt that you're going to work with, you're going to work with different size bags. It keeps, And I use the bags to organize my all of the pieces. 